and we're live. Oops. That's Where's right, it's Christmas bird? time, ladies and gentlemen. The Yay. holidays, they're incoming. You better hide yourself. It's going to happen whether or not you want it to. Look at that evil snowman. Only Ben would put that there. <laughs> <laughs> it is time once again for the yellow snow that falls and are returning from last year. Evil snowman. Yes. Oh, is that what that I is? I remember okay. him. Yeah. <laughs> when, you show, when you had it on... Fubar, I saw that and noticed it. I'm like, What's oh, going on, beautiful people? Year. Hopefully, everybody survived your version of the holidays. Maybe it happened, maybe it didn't. But hey, we're all still here, and it's definitely Wednesday. It is that time for us to sit back, relax, <laughs> and have a chat about some of the things going on in open source and all the other fun stuff. A little bit of yeah. pre-show, seeing what's going on. I uh, ran outside and screamed, I think, for the final time at my long man. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> hopefully. He is aware that he, in fact, did not finish in time and to get to the far side of the lawn and cut there. <laughs> oh, man. Look <laughs> at this. Oh, yes. Strider in his normal mood <laughs> of edginess. Oh, hi, Art Theron. <laughs> so edgy. <laughs> hugs and love to Art Theron and hugs and love to Strider. He needs it. He needs a hug. That's because he hasn't seen his friends in ages. <laughs> <laughs> except, except online, <laughs> but in person. And his birthday. Yeah, I this could week. go for some Taco Bell right about now for some reason. I can't imagine why. <laughs> I don't know, man. I like this Taco Bell. There isn't a decent taco place that actually delivers. Oh, that's what I was to getting this at. This side yeah. of town. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh. <laughs> And uh, there is a couple uh, that use uh, Uber Eats, but Uber Eats doesn't deliver on this street because uh, screw me. I like oh, it. No. <laughs> Just that street, eh? <laughs> uh, yeah, though, basically, um, the street that runs parallel to this one uh, through um, Cherry Hinton, mm -hmm. no issues. This one, nope. Hmm. <laughs> Pedro. <laughs> I guess uh, living right on the edge <laughs> doesn't <Yeah>. uh, <laughs> doesn't qualify me for Uber Eats delivery. Deliveroo? <laughs> sure. Uh, just eat? Absolutely. Uber Eats? No. All the other services are fine. <laughs> Uber Think Eats. about that. I'm sure everyone at some point has been in the um, middle of some arbitrary delivery map or something yeah. of that sort. You're like, really? Why not here? I'm like, eh, what could do about it? This is still part of, you know, the actual city of Cambridge. It's not part of the extended um, great uh, Cambridge area. It, it, it It's still very much, you know, Cambridge. And your Cambridge just went dark. Really? Is that what happened? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> uh oh. No, that was definitely me going, uh -oh, is that locked on there type? Eh, it probably is. We'll find out. We found out. <laughs> yes. All right. Um, <laughs> we're going to be doing it on time today, so we got about three okay. minutes to rock and roll. Okay. <laughs> okay, I'll be right back. <laughs> That's my cue. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, he is a fox boy. Yes, he is. <laughs> Jill has a squeaky door. <laughs> Yeah, speaking of squeaky, this chair started to squeak. <laughs> this one's squeaky, I think it then. might be the cold, because I sat down today, it's like, eh. Really? <laughs> I, uh, this one got, like, really bad, so I took the base off and I shoved some Teflon washers. Yeah. On all the screws, so I think it's bought me a little bit of squeaky time. But the next chair I get is not going to have arms on it, so I can actually sit down with a guitar in here without going... <laughs> Terrified, I'm just... without having the arm right up against your cheek. It's like, 
dude. <laughs> like, I need to record like getting into this position with a guitar too, which is hilarious. <laughs> because once I get in, then I'm like, how do I get to the headphones? Uh oh. Um, <laughs> it it needs Benny Hill music playing behind it. <laughs> the guitar cover of the <laughs> Yakety Sax. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> hello the real computer kid and hello Daisy <laughs> I need to refill my thing once I'm beautiful people I got a reasonably sized show for you today yes yes it is we've had much much bigger <laughs> It, it, it's nice to have, you know, <laughs> a moderate amount of stories. Nokia. IRC Bridge. Oh, right? Nokia also has the. Okay, all right. <laughs> oh, is the uh, Irk Bridge broke? Does someone want to poke Jordan? <laughs> I mean, you could. Let's see. Uh, add Frojo. The Urk bridge seems borked. <laughs> oh, Cumulus was owned by Melanox. Okay, yeah, that explains that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm still disappointed that the 30, 30 series cards didn't come with SFP plus ports. <laughs> I mean, no, no, they're saving that for the quadros. <laughs> man, it's like that would take an entire extra card out of this box. And I still had the last laugh, even, you know, with the VR port, which is, you know, the USB-C port that yeah. is on 2060. I'm like, I didn't get that for VR. It's like, yes, it's your USB-C port. To which later on, Scott was like, wait a minute, that's just a, yep. Mm -hmm. it, as long as it's compliant with the USB um, the specification, yeah, it's just a USB port. <laughs> That, that's how we were uh, hooking up. Man, I think I had four HDMI USB encoders plugged in this box at one point. It was an adventure. Because they had to be started up in just the right order. They wouldn't work. I remember you asking Alara, can I set the name of a device with a UDEV rule or something? I still to this day have some crazy UDEV. I learned a lot about UDEV. I went from like, I don't need that into my life to like, what do you need to know? I didn't need to learn much to get the um, dual sense working. <laughs> they added a, uh, there's an update in the uh, client beta uh, this week. Uh, it They fixed it where it'll go to bed now. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah. <laughs> Which, by the I way, just held the button down. <laughs> you do what I do. Um, it took me a while to discover PS4 controller, the Dual Spock. Uh, this is my normal. I get done playing game. I get done playing with. I'd set down a closed Steam. Mm -hmm. Logical. If you close Steam, these just stay on. <laughs> <laughs> Which, I don't use this controller much. I'm like, the battery must just be shot in this thing. Because every time I went to use it, it was like, low battery. And I was like, oh, that's what's happening. It's not sending it the go-to-bed signal. Mm -hmm. So this thing's just sitting there going, check me out. I'm on. <laughs> yeah, this no, one, I always hold down the, the button to shut, shut it down. down. <laughs> I didn't because that opened Steam Big Picture. They fixed that now. I've already learned my lesson. It's too late. <laughs> there was the thing that uh, if you uh, there's an option if you close uh, if you hit the guide button, it would open Steam Big Picture mode. But even if you unticked it, it would still do it. Mm -hmm. They fixed it now. 
dude. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, computer kid. How you doing? <laughs> and yes. Over to time and not beats per minute, unless I want to keep track of how many beats per minute we're hitting during the recording. <laughs> <laughs> then it becomes a competition. <laughs> right? Uh, the I, IRC bridge is down, I guess. Sometimes I forget to change it and I look over there to see what our time code is. Our LTC, it is, it's just number seizures. I'm like, oh, right. <laughs> okay, Jordan does say that the. Um, it's been rebooted. Yes. Oh, okay. Good. Now it's working, computer kid. There it is. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> I find your bread sort of lacking. <laughs> Ping pong. Ding dong. The baguette sword. <laughs> Where you're always uh, undecided. It's like, should I swing with it or eat it? <laughs> Baguette I sword pales in comparison <laughs> to pizza sword. <laughs> <laughs> the pepperoni on the handle, though. I'm a sweaty boy when it comes to my palms. <laughs> it would get very, very slippery. <laughs> oh, oh, no. I have to worry about that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I only notice when I'm really into a game, like really into a game, because I'll lift my hand off the mouse and go, "Ew!" <laughs> oh boy! <laughs> I uh, I just chalk it down to like arm length and size, man. I don't have like the best circulation in my digits. My hands are always like cold, so. Well, I don't have the best circulation on my right hand. Go figure. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> of course, yes. <laughs> I don't have the thing that, you know, moves it up and down and stimulates the blood flow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Jordan, kill Pong. Use guns. <laughs> Aw, I love Pong. <laughs> so we need. We need Pong Royale. Battle Royale for Pong. <laughs> I think someone made that. <laughs> yeah, I remember actually, seeing they're... like uh, several like 12 players or whatever it was Pong mm -hmm. <laughs> oh yeah um, in fact that was one of my favorite things I set up uh, I did a, a LAN party of at my old house at my parents house I set up uh, it was the 3D Pong and I set up a 3D Pong party and they had co-op and, and everything it was really cool <laughs> and you can get like 20 people in <laughs> that was a fun game <laughs> <laughs> We need to get more retro. We need to play ping. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah that oh, was like Pong versus 90s. Capcom. One of the characters is just uh, Ball. the Pong paddle. <laughs> it's a uh, Asmodeus. Zork. Yes, Zork. <laughs> no, that's a special attack. It sends the ball. <laughs> Pong. <laughs> oh, man. Um, which one? Ping pong. <laughs> Are you done leaking skin? <laughs> oh, yeah. They know, man. There's like a skin <laughs> drip hole in the bottom of the trackball. That's a, that takes a moment <laughs> right, when you pop up the trackball and you're like, what could all... Oh, right. Okay. That's, that's a skin oh, place. so it's not just a hole so that the trackball can actually reach if you want to use it as a mouse? <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Sometimes I'm ashamed of FX boy. Yeah. <laughs> Battle Royale. Pong. Could have pizza like a little flippy <laughs> option. <laughs> Where the ball goes down and you can use it as a mouse. <laughs> this ball is very... You can drop it on a marble floor and it can bounce exactly twice before it cracks. <laughs> <laughs> Fortunately, I had a spare. <laughs> I was really impressed because it bounces and bounced again. I was like, wow, that didn't shatter. Oh, never mind. Oh, yeah, a good reminding there, computer kid. <laughs> we already run past the time. <laughs> That's how we keep ourselves in check, computer kid. Yeah. <laughs> I just really like watching work, numbers. Yeah. It throws people off. 
Yeah, it, it, it <laughs> after it goes through, then it repeats for a bit. Then we decide. <laughs> and Ben decides when we go live. <laughs> it used to be the taco clock, and now it's the pizza clock. It used to be the poop clock. Yeah. Yeah. We'll remember that, too. <laughs> that wasn't even a real clock. It only counted down for like... <laughs> yeah, it was only like a minute or something. Maybe. <laughs> it was always great when somebody tuned in and you were like, wait a minute. Mm. <laughs> yeah. FX Boy Plasma Pong. I I never played it, but I, I remember seeing it. Mm. Tis the season. Oh, it's 12 degrees. It's warmed up. Oh, jeez. <laughs> I like XFC's weather, man. I looked at XFC's mm. weather, like, I guess last night, because this is probably like 1 o'clock in the morning, mm -hmm. and I just happened to mouse up. Mike came in here to shut everything off. It was minus zero. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> It's six. Six. <laughs> okay. I like this weather app. Just F it. Mm. It's effing cold. Yeah. It's That's... about 20 Celsius here. <laughs> the only Android app I ever made is a simple weather applet because, man, nobody makes a simple weather applet that just I pulls know. off no up, gives you, yeah. and it doesn't come with like the weather channel. It's like, hey, Here's our little weather bug that All you can put up stuff. top. And yeah. our social media network for commenting. And yeah, <laughs> I know. <laughs> Would you like 10 day predictions? Please pay for the premium version. <laughs> <laughs> I, mm. mm -hmm. X-Blast. <laughs> Sounds nice. Yeah, naughty. I love that. The weather.io is great. <laughs> Simple. To the point. <laughs> Somebody's lined done. It's good. All right. Um. <laughs> Steve has been bang now. What do you want now? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, Jill. That sounded like a request. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> That's for when he gets home. <laughs> no. No. I mean, if you have to go now, we understand. <laughs> <laughs> you guys ready? Yes. Oh, yeah. No more weather bot. <laughs> weather bot is. I don't know. Is Weatherbot even um? Wasn't it, no, it W hasn't been on. Bang Now? Yeah. <laughs> but last time I checked it, it didn't didn't okay, Brad. wasn't working. No. Bots come and go, unfortunately. Yeah, and that one was having uh, financial issues. <laughs> I know, so it came and went a few times. <laughs> yeah, everyone's trying it. <laughs> All right. Um, hey, everyone. We're gonna do a show. So, chill out. Yes. Let's get a recording. Bonk. <laughs> okay. There we go. And mm, three, two. And welcome back to Linux Weekly Daily Wednesdays, where we can sit back, relax, take that midweek break, talk about some of the stranger things going on in the world of Linux. The ooky spooky. It is the <laughs> season, right? It's holiday season. <laughs> yes. It is. Well, it's starting to be anyway. No, you absolutely. Look, man, it's, Frank's got on his Santa hat. Yeah. yeah. It's beginning just to look a lot like Christmas. A bit. <laughs> He's been wearing that for a long time. No, he hasn't. You can shut up. <laughs> that, that took 15 minutes to get set up because I had to cut holes and things, man. So you can just oh. go away, Pedro. Ben had to put real work into that. Hey, beautiful people. Yeah, as opposed to everything else in here, I, I just like slipped and it fell into place. Man, um, I'm Vin Stone. That's Joe Bryant. And uh, over there's Pedro Mateus. And we got quite the show for you this week. Um, been up to a bunch of things. I know, Jill, you had a surprise package show up right before the show. Yay! Yay! 
Yay! So I'm so excited. It's here. It's here. So I got my Raspberry Pi 400 computer kit in the mail and I got it this morning. I haven't even had a chance to fire it up. So that's what I'm going to be doing after the show. So next week I'll, All right. I'll let everyone know <laughs> my progress and what I've done with it. I'm very excited. Right on. Here, camera. <laughs> camera. <laughs> you know what's cool is the SD card has a little spring in it. Like a proper device. So when you take it, you want to. <laughs> They've <eject> sold it. <laughs> out Raspberry Pi. You sold out. Man. See, it's got spring. Okay. <laughs> I, uh, I, I'm going to need both this Raspberry Pi 3A and this Raspberry Pi 4 to not be offended by Jill just implying yeah. that they're not real devices. Dude. <laughs> yeah, for real. That's true. Everyone, you get it's it that the a... best part about a spring loaded micro SD card is its ability to launch it. Directly yes. into your stove, and you're wondering how because you're in the basement. You're like, what? what is it? Yeah, but it was just a, a, a nice little added bonus. <laughs> it has a spring in its step. Well, it is the fastest Raspberry Pi around, so okay. yes, yes, it works. <laughs> right on. Anything else? Oh yes, so and I had a had a wonderful time on Jupiter Broadcasting's Linux Unplug yesterday. It's always fun to be with uh, Chris and the Jupiter Broadcasting gang. <laughs> I'm still seeing if this thing fits. I haven't worn it yet. I bought this last yeah. year. Yeah. Like, Ooh, yay! It's a shirt. It's keep me warm. That's the end of my story, Pedro. What? Uh, uh, <laughs> you wrote nothing. I, I wrote nothing because I have nothing to work. <laughs> As we're walking into Christmas, people thought, you know, it's a good idea to hire a bunch of people right now. So, yeah. <laughs> we're at the point where we don't have enough laptops. <laughs> mm. Oh, boy. So, so did we're, you have, get a, we're a having minute. a look at the pile of, like, older models with hard drives in it. And oh. going, well, maybe. <laughs> Let's let Pedro upgrade these. <laughs> I'm, I'm, frankly, I'm surprised they didn't call you and be like, you need to bring some of those back. <laughs> I don't bring laptops home. Well, the, okay. I brought my work one. All right. That's it. <laughs> Man, I've been playing around with a bunch of stuff. I've uh, been prototyping like a semi-advanced, uh, kind of in the weeds, um, like a Jack Digital Mixer setup. You know, it's a guide for like Linux streamers and Jordan has nice. set up his own test bed. He's given me some feedback on it. And the first draft of the, it's going to be like a combination video guide with a bunch of stuff to take care of on your system. But the first draft of that video is in the announcements. If you're a patron, you can get into our discord, take a look at it. I wouldn't play with it just yet, but you can watch it, kind of get an idea of what's going to take place and you can help if you want more than welcome to follow along um, and provide some feedback because I, I got to revi refine. I got to cut the sharp edges off this monster. But um, yeah, if you're a you know, podcast or streamer or anything like that, this is going to be a nigh invaluable resource about the right way to get things set up without having to spend money. That's the important thing. You're going to be able to use your mm. existing hardware and it's going to show you how to make a smaller version of what we have here. And maybe I'll get that out um, by the end of the month. I mean, I, 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 this is a very complex topic to tackle, and it's very important to come into it. Like, Pedro's scared of it. Yes. He is. <laughs> I mean, I, I'm not saying that to give him a hard time. Pedro's like, I don't want him. Fortunately, Jordan was like, yeah, I got this. Mm, he, he's hammering on it. So, uh, yeah, we want to go take a look at that. And, uh, Stay tuned. That's going to be an exciting, exciting little project, but not as exciting as uh, people complaining about the lack of Linux Aww. on the new M1 <laughs> Macintosh. Yay. But yeah, so there's a guy, Pedro, you might might have heard of him. Um, he's uh, like Hector Martin. <laughs> yeah, mm -hmm. we're, we're probably going to have to talk about that, but he's mm -hmm. like, hmm. Well, what would be a good way to uh, possibly get the Mac up and running some Linux? Well, maybe making it a little bit of a goal. He set up a Patreon account and he's like, yo, um, I'm going to do this. You might know me from, um, you know, a Bestos for the PS3 and, you know, a little thing called Linux on the PS4. Fail overflow. Yeah. Yep. He's yeah. one of the members. <laughs> the dude 
has done some things. Hector has set up a patron campaign and can pag it even. He's like, yo, check this out. Give me some coin. If you got some coin to spare and I'm just going to work on this full time, might need to hire some people to help out with it. But, but this isn't going to be locked behind anything. It's like I'm going to push everything out to GitHub and we can get it up and running. I think this is kind of interesting, um, especially since all the development's going to be in the open. And I think a lot of people, including Linus himself, he talked about it last week. He was like, God, I love an ARM laptop. Yeah, wouldn't we all? A good one. Shut up, Microsoft. Mm-hmm. You, that doesn't exist. Quit. You, you're trying to pretend you didn't even make that. Um, <laughs> Apple. Apple has an interesting choice to make because oh, I know Pedro and I have discussed this. The quickest way to get Linux on your device is to not allow people to install Linux. Try and lock on it your down. Device. See what happens. Yeah, lock it down. <laughs> I think it was um, extra credits that coined the do not tango with the types of people who want to install Linux on their PlayStation. You will lose. Mm-hmm. Um, this, I, I want to see what Cupertino comes up with because you, they do have a legitimate choice. Are they going to make this uh, friction free? Or are we going to come up with some way to just get Linux on the M1? play with it or are they going to have to uh have it open for them because that will eventually (laughs) happen or option three how about we just not buy hardware from companies that are hostile towards (laughs) yeah you need to tell Linus Torvalds that because uh, i don't think he's buying one (laughs) yeah well uh, right now he says Sure, I, I'd love to get my hands on one, but I need working GPU drivers, and um, right now that's not happening. So, <laughs> even the PS4 uh, Mesa implementation for the weird Southbridge type of GPU that they happen to have on that system, it's not 100% of the way there. But, yeah, so, yeah. 3D acceleration, uh, proper GPU support would be a must-have for uh, Linus Torvalds. So, yeah, no, don't, okay. don't, mm-hmm. don't give Apple money. Aww. Well, you know, we, when we talked about this last week, I was even thinking, I bet you the the guy that worked on this PlayStation and the Nintendo Switch hack, uh, getting Linux on those devices, is going to be involved in this, and sure enough, he is. And um, I think this is really great. I would like to have the M1 chip with Linux on it, <laughs> definitely. <laughs> and uh, everyone out there, make sure to contribute to Hector Martin's Patreon campaign if you want this to happen. This is this is a good thing, getting Linux on it all is. the devices. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, if Apple doesn't play a ball, uh, that yeah. will just be broken open for everyone on the internet. While if they help them, they can maybe not reveal the rest of the vulnerabilities and just say, no, no here's the way to do it. Well, yeah. I, I was reading this post. Um, you can get in for a buck. It's pretty cheap. Uh, but he's already working on um, doing discovering registers and all the fun stuff right now. So Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. And I want to read the postmortem like they did with the PS4 where they explained like, everything they had to go through. Yeah, I want to read reverse that engineering. <laughs> Exactly. <Yeah. laughs> the wor- worst case scenario, you're going to get a very entertaining talk about this. And... Yeah. <laughs> so. Gnome 338.2. Mm-hmm. This is like a little point release, isn't it? Yeah, well, it, it is and it isn't. There's l- tons of updates and bug fi- fixes, so this is actually a really important release and the and the last one of this of this year. And one of my favorite things, uh, my uh, most annoying bugs that has been fixed, and one of my favorite things is the GNOME Control Center now correctly detects when Ethernet devices are hot plugged. <laughs> that was definitely an issue, and. Um, uh, of annoyance yes so i'm glad that's fixed and gosh they have updates to everything to the the music player and even to the gtk emoji chooser um (laughs) you'd think that's not important but it kind of is especially for those of us who do lots of tweeting (laughs) so (laughs) so (laughs) you can um now allow inserting multiple emoji by pressing the control key on the keyboard and they updated the emoji data to Unicode 13. Now, that's a big deal. <laughs> so, oh, does it have the uh, anatomically correct heart 
emoji yes, now? it does. It does. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but uh, the one thing, and the irony was absolutely not lost on me, the second paragraph mm-hmm. of the article proper is uh, they improved support for uh, in GNOME boxes um, to have GNOME OS installed. <laughs> How yes. it you know in that teeny tiny little GUI application that you created for QMU and KVM and uh, I think Libvirt as well? How do you not support your own OS? You know the OS that is there, much like <laughs> KDE Neon, to showcase GNOME. Yes, your desktop. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe they were too busy being in you know, a desktop environment that didn't crash all the time. <laughs> Uh. Well, uh, they did fix the one crash that Jill mentioned, uh, but yeah, <laughs> no more. So actually, I it got me curious. It's like, oh, so they have a KDE, KDE neon type of thing. Let me look that up. Yep, that's exactly what that is. It's just a very bare bones uh, version of uh, Linux distro that runs GNOME. It's there to showcase what it can do, and it has the latest version, and it does all the things the way GNOME would you know, uh, have them done, which means it's an operating system that I will never um, willingly (laughs) touch. I mean, if someone tricks me and says, it's like, oh, it's Linux, like, okay, I'll start poking at it until I open the terminal and see no more S. Oh, bye. (laughs) 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 You're such a sweetheart. Uh, Yeah. Now... Something I do not have a lot of experience with, we were talking in the pre-show before we went live, is uh, VPNs. I just don't have much of a use for them in day-to-day life, um, minus, uh, you know, several months back when I was having an issue with uh, DaVinci Resolve, one of their solutions was try resetting your um, registration keys with a VPN, which I think I used, mm. like NordVPN, which I was like, hey, look, they're... They have a Linux option on the command line. I thought it was really sweet. Somebody else wants in on that sweet, sweet um, out of the box Linux VPN action. They do. And it was one of the biggest ones that still didn't have support because NordVPN, uh, private internet access, actually, private internet access has done a bunch of things for Linux in the past, but uh, Proton VPN was still very much missing. There was a community effort that sort of created a. Um, a CLI version to that would allow people to use Proton VPN, but now it's official. It's still in beta, but it is official, and the uh, command line is actually very simple. It's just Proton VPN CLI. Log in your username, and then it asks for your password, and then you um, type in um, Proton VPN CLI C to connect. Uh, L to pick the location that you want to use your VPN uh, from, and uh, D for disconnect. That that's very good. That that that's actually very good. <laughs> Considering uh, the PIA alternative, which is n- nowhere near as simple, but PIA does have its own GUI, and even better. It's that little script that PIA offers for everyone mm-hmm. who's not uh, on, you know, uh, Go, uh, Debian or Ubuntu-based distros. You can actually, uh, you can also run that script in Debian and Ubuntu. But that will set the all of the VPN connections that PIA offers uh, into the network manager applet of your desktop environment. You just go into VPN connections and you get the full list of them. You just have to pick one. And uh, I would also recommend going in and adding the uh, username and password to the ones you actually use. Because otherwise it just asks you, okay, put in your username and password. Boom, you're connected. I it, think it's neat. That's I mean, really this, nice. This does <laughs> show some acknowledgement. Of, hey, man, people are using desktop Linux. Yes, they are. It's kind of brilliant. What are your thoughts? So we would like to see some type of GUI or some type of like DE integration. Would you, I guess it'd be better. Oh man. What if, we, what if we get a snap? <laughs> or app image or flat pack? <laughs> I'm, I'm just trying Please to get yeah. Pedro started on something. <laughs> it's being distributed as <laughs> <Yeah>. a deb. <laughs> so the official Proton beta app does not support split tunneling right now or running on a headless system. So you'll still have to use the community Linux client for that until they they bring that functionality into the official app. So that's very important to know. And um, 
what's what is awesome is that the Proton Mail Bridge for Linux was launched in April, and it is really nice to see more progress being done for Linux with with their VPN, the Proton VT, VPN. Very cool. I've been using PIA for a while, so but it's nice to see some other uh, lots of more effort done on the Linux side. <laughs> more support. I mean, more yes. support. Yeah. <laughs> Hundred percent. Blender just keeps on releasing new hotness. Oh they can't yes, be stopped. it can't be <laughs> one stopped. Day, one day They're we're going to get a finished version of Centel game. <laughs> <laughs> so Blender two point nine one has been released, and this is the fourth major re release of our favorite open source three D and two D animation and modeling app of this year. So this is. This is really amazing. There are lots of sculpting updates. That's that's actually huge in this re release. And the sculpting includes support for collisions in the what? cloth sculpting <laughs> tool. <laughs> and it also introduces improvements to bevels and Boolean operations and updates to the UI animation and simulation tools. And this is uh, one of my favorite new tools is the new box trim and lasso trim tool, which lets you add and remove geometry from a model using box selection or lasso gestures. That's really helpful. And some of the other 3D programs out there allow you to do this. So they're just, they're doing all these fine I can tweaks finally make with... whatever that's supposed to be. Yay. <laughs> yes, and you can make oh, it blink. It's, it's an <laughs> avocado <laughs> with, uh, with red hair. <laughs> Oh, oh. <laughs> there's their motion. Uh, that, <laughs> no, no, can't have that too long on screen. Otherwise, Jet Set Radio is going to sue somebody. <laughs> <laughs> and and thank you to M Fox Dog for letting us know about this update. That's pretty. Cool, Blender's man. rules. Blender's <laughs> it's one a great of my program apps. that you know everything in my life is going swimmingly as long as I don't have to use it. <laughs> you know that XKCD about uh, how well your life is going till the last time you open um, <laughs> XOR Conf for Ven it's Blender. It is. Man. Yeah, it is actually. I, I he just get likes to, to use it, it for doing test renders. He doesn't like to use it for much more. Oh, uh, to the contrary, Jill. I use it to make actual things that I use I instead of test renders. Yes, and so have I. That's what Fox uses it for. I'm sure he uses it for yeah. other things, but That's we fun. always see the test renders. <laughs> That's genuinely my fence. issue with um, blenders because you know I don't sit and play with it. And, yeah. uh, but hey, man, that's a great update. A little bit of a kind of a PSA I want to throw out, but Humble has a big royalty-free music bundle. We know a lot of people here. You know, you might do a little Twitch stream and you might do a little podcasting and all that fun stuff. Maybe you're interested in this because this is a gang of stuff, man. It's 29 albums, royalty-free music, 25 bucks. Of course, we have a, what do you call it, an affiliate link. If you want to click on that and that's on our website, that'd be awesome. If not, that's fine, whatever. Uh, you get, you know, three, five albums for a buck, seventeen ninety eight. You get more than five albums, 10, mm -hmm. 11. Mm -hmm. And I give them 25 bucks. I got all these, man. All these albums. And nice. I went to extract them the other day, Pedro. <laughs> yeah, you did. Adventures in <laughs> extraction. <laughs> first things first, humble. Girlfriend, you you got to work on that bulk download for the um, zip files. Me and Jordan were like, really? Jordan was talking about an ebook bundle, but that takes a long time. Just like one big zip file. But I, I get all the zips downloaded, you know, it's, um, I don't know, almost 30 individual zip files I had. And like any normal person, I'm like, well, you know, let's just unzip, e, do, start, uh, just go for it. First one, second, but, huh. <laughs> All right. Well, you know what? Mm -hmm. Let's just download that zip again. Maybe, maybe that one was bad. Blah. Okay. <laughs> let, 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 let's skip that one. Blah. <laughs> Man, all right. What's going on? And I, I went playing around, looking around, and uh, Pedro, Pedro just told me the dumbest thing in the world. He, he suggested the stupidest idea I'd ever heard. He said, well, just unroar them. But it's a zip file, Pedro. It's like, no, no, man. <laughs> that, Remember sneaky. that issue that uh, Mir was having about bundle uh, zips being RARs? 
Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, As it turns out, I think Mir's that biggest was issue was installing Roar. That's what hung me up. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't his ability to use Roar. It's like, wait, what? Um, yeah. So I, I did, um, I think uh, 25 um, or possibly 26 zip files are, in fact, Roars. Yeah. <laughs> Good luck. I'm not going to tell you which ones they are because I don't remember. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, basically, my solution for actually, there's a we got a little bit of hate mail for Saturday show. Somebody wrote in with a very clever way of um, picking through them and changing them. But yeah, just do an unzip. You'll see what the list that fails and like boom, nuke those mm -hmm. and do a mass rename of all the zip files to RAR. Then you can just unrar them, and it'll work if you want to go through it. Um, yeah, that's the thing. That's a little PSA uh, because. I sent Humble a support ticket and Humble hit me back and they're like, have you tried using WinZip in seven? Like you didn't <laughs> so I, have you tried looking up yeah. Linux? Yeah. I, I, I sent them back a way to pull the hex out of it. I'm like, here, run this command against it and see what it says when it says R-A-R, when it dumps the um, <laughs> And get back to me. They haven't written me back. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, Pedro, you use laptops, and uh, I do. I, I know Linux has always had a little bit of a problem, you know, like um, CPU power throttling, energy um, balancing. Yeah. Yes, <laughs> because you can either have your laptop be extremely slow but use almost no energy, or it could be very very fast, and your battery will be dead in thirty minutes. <laughs> it, that will happen. But uh, there have been many attempts. Um, laptop tools, for example, they uh, have very aggressive power savings, but it will still keep uh, the processor uh, power related stuff, governor and other things. They will try to keep those moderate so that if you do need a bit more performance, it will still give it to you. But at the core of tools like um, laptop tools, you have CPU power, which but is Pedro, a Pedro, Pedro, it's really easy though, man. I just create, a, I have a cycling bash script that I can just double click <laughs> on my desktop, enter my root password, and eventually it'll get to the uh. right governor if I run it enough times. Not so easy <laughs> yes. enough. There couldn't possibly be an easier way to do this. There are actually other scripts that don't need a root password that take care of it for you when you plug in and unplug the power uh, supply to the laptop. But what if I'm a System Windows B, user and I can't use, <laughs> I don't know how to type, because that's the only reason I wouldn't. Uh, uh, I, I, well, I, in that I, case, yeah. there there is a GUI for CPU oh, okay. power. Uh, and what it does, uh, if you have an <laughs> Intel processor, uh, it will actually let you set the um, actual P states. You can enable specific P states. So if you want either like maximum performance um, and maximum power savings with none of the in-betweens, you can. Uh, if you have an AMD processor, it just shows you like the maximum and minimum frequency. You can adjust those. There are some sliders to adjust those. But you can't change any kind of uh, power states in between, at least I couldn't. But then again, I have most of them disabled on my 3700X. So that may be the issue too. But the, um, yeah, no, it's CPU power GUI. The, the most important thing, uh, if you just install it from the um, the repos, if you're running Ubuntu, they have one of those package trackers for the different distros. And there's only three uh, distros that have it at the latest version, which is 1.0. Big kudos. Uh, it's in the AUR, so it's not even in the official Arch repos. Uh, it's uh, Open Mandriva Rolling and Open Mandriva Cooker. So, yes, mm -hmm. if you have Ubuntu or Fedora or something like that, not 0.7 is what you're currently looking at. <laughs> this got my attention because this made me I'm like, what do I really want? To oh, right. You can run it on your Pine, pine phone. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Done. <laughs> I mean, if you don't want to type in pseudo CPU power G, uh, no mm -hmm. frequency set G, and then the uh, <laughs> have you the actual attempt that to you use want to use like a six to. inch? It is adorable watching me try to. Yes, I would like it going. Oh, with your big hands. Yes, that would be a challenge. Yeah, this is this is really nice. It's an easy way to set your CPU to performance for playing games if game mode isn't That's installed. An yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and it's it's actually good for those of us who do a lot of rendering of animation videos because there's some there's some soft software that doesn't support GPU acceleration yet, so we have to we're relying on CPU. 
But I was really happy. I actually found this in R Linux. So I was really happy to come across CPU power GUI. <laughs> nice. Yeah, that's the <laughs> thing. Uh, go check it out if you want. I found um, on demand is my it, it is my new hotness for governors for desktop and again for laptops. Mm. It makes perfect sense. Conservative. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Simply laptops, because perfect. most of your laptops are going to be Intel anyway, because AMD only made seven CPUs <laughs> for. <laughs> so let's see. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> really cool in theory, but much like an AMD video card or an NVIDIA video card, they might as well not exist at this point. But if you can't get your hands on them, maybe you want to do some video editing. There's a new version, mm -hmm. a new beta for DaVinci Resolve Studio 17 point. Not it's their gang of new things to play with, man. There's a support for that DaVinci Resolve speed editor, which basically mm -hmm. if you buy a licensed copy of uh, DaVinci Resolve, which is like 300 bucks, they just throw that thing in, man. It's like a metal... Uh, control surface with a wheel that you can turn around if that's what you want to do. It's kind of brilliant. And there's also support for that ridiculously overpriced Fairlight mini console, which is like a, 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 a little box with some motorized faders on it that during the presentation they showed that. And I just, man, they, <laughs> I, I thought they were going to black magic that price up to like a grand. I'm like, I bet they're going to try to charge a thousand dollars for that control surface. And they're like, no, then. Three thousand dollars. <laughs> okay. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yes. <laughs> so, uh, okay. There's support for independent uh, track height. That's good because everything defaults to like mice type, so you can't see your waveforms, your thumbnails very well. And the new DaVinci Beta and the Open Toolkit that I just talked about last time for DaVinci Resolve for workflow integrations and plugins and codecs and all that. That's there and. Um, uh, one thing I do want to point out, uh, there's a bunch of stuff for audio. There's even native support for 44.1 for your audio clips and instruments and all that fun stuff. Uh, just This is a big, big, big update. Uh, it's try huge. it. Bunch of bug fixes. Uh -huh. uh, still, I know a lot of people are going to ask, like, but then can I directly import my MP4s uh, on Linux to the free version? To which I'll um, happily respond, nay. Um, <laughs> but it's a cool product. I mean, if you're doing um, any type of serious video editing, I highly suggest going and checking it out. Now, one thing I do want to point out with this version, with the latest 17, um, since the first version, normally I would say if you're on Debian or anything like that, anything outside of CentOS, um, you would use Make Resolve Deb, Make Deb Resolve, whichever one it was, to do that like I've done in my guides. But I did notice that on if you're running... Debian 10, or I'm pretty sure like on your Ubuntu's 18.04, uh, 20.04s, you can just run the run file if you want to feel brave, and it should install regularly. You don't need to kill the X nice. server like the NVIDIA drivers? <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, so what I was impressed with this version with this version is they're using their neural engine AI much more. So the Magic Mask now uh, using is using the DaVinci neural engine and it generates tracking masks, which will be a lot easier for productions. And um, I've actually been waiting for these effects to come to DaVinci. There, it's the Resolve FX motion trails, temporal motion blur, object trails, and disco effects. Yeah, it, it's it's kind of about time because I've been using those effects in animation apps since the '80s. <laughs> so I was waiting for that for in DaVinci. Well, I and mean, it's, it's pretty advanced <laughs> effects for a video editor. <laughs> yeah, but it also is doing motion graphics now as well. Well, it's, um, it's like Fusion Light. I mean, it's yeah. got Fusion in it. I should make also point their 3D <laughs> modeling suite Fusion is available too, uh, the latest version. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so there's just, um, uh, speaking of, uh, of the motion graphics integrated, uh, they have GPU accelerated 2D shapes uh, toolkit now for motion graphics, which is really awesome. And uh, just uh, something fun and, and, and cool is you can now uh, directly upload to Twitter from within DaVinci Resolve. <laughs> so no. I, that was, I don't, I would never do that, but. You don't have there. to worry about it because on Linux, none of that works. <laughs> <laughs> the, 
this is like a, one of the <laughs> feature parodies that's off with the Linux version. The Mac and Windows yeah, versions have Windows account Windows integrations version. for YouTube and Twitter and stuff like that. So you can post directly. Don't have to worry about that on Linux. This is not there. Well, you just <laughs> export it out and then upload it. <laughs> so there you go. <laughs> so it's going uh, to be just as slow. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's not going to save you any time, man. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Keep that in mind. Go play with it. The free version is free, as in beer. And uh, yeah, I just thought I'd give it a mention. It's what I use to make these shows because you're talking about the ability to leverage GPU compute. So I'm able to do a 1080p 60 hour long video and render that out in H.265 HEVC uh, main 10 profile 12, 13 minutes. So. That is game changing when it comes down to um, production speed wise. So yes. <laughs> go play with it. Still got plenty of love for Katie and live, but yeah, when it comes to like time, hmm. let's stick with video online and um, from the men blog because they've been working on something, man. Uh, Festivus is coming fast and ho, ho, ho. Here's Mint TV effectively. Yeah. Yep. Uh, hypnotics. Uh, you got a preference screen now, so you can configure multiple TV providers. <laughs> That's interesting. And, you know, if you've got VOD set up. Massively illegal, depending on the country, yes. It's going to be setting up um, IMDB. <laughs> it's going to be pulling data from that. And uh, it's currently available. So TVs, movies, and sales. That was my real question. I'm like, where do you get all? Well, I know a lot of um, channels. I'm going to say non-English channels are available yes. <laughs> from the broadcasters. Um in IPTV format, but the only ones I can think of offhand are, I don't know how I would hook into them because they're usually on like, um, what I think of offhand is ABC, not ABC, what you're thinking. I'm talking about the Australian broadcasting, uh, their news service is there. And, um, I know sky news and, um, who else? Who else has got some, Patriotism of these things. No. <laughs> NASA TV. <laughs> That's NASA <free>. TV. <laughs> yes. A couple of places, but yeah, I don't know um, who this would be uh, useful to. I mean, yeah, the, the ones yeah. on YouTube you could already access. Uh, this, I'm assuming, is for the other ones. Oh, is, is this like a Plex play? They're like, no, this is for your massive library of uh, ripped DVDs. Uh, it does have some EPG support, whatever that is. Uh, PVR, which is kind of interesting because you can do time shifting, recording, pausing, all that. Custom categories, favorites, hiding unused content, and the likes. So, yeah, it's available as a dev if you want to go play with it. they got a GitHub. If you want to, uh, yeah, it's an M3UI PTV player. So if that's something yeah. you were looking for. If I, you can find that M3U somewhere on the interwebs, hidden somewhere in that website's uh, source code, you could just feed it directly to Hypnotics. Admittedly, I've had to go digging to get links to play with VLC on web zones that were so atrocious. Hi, Crunchyroll. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, man. That was a thing. <laughs> Really? I wish I could just drop a Crunchyroll link into MPV so that I could actually get some proper full screen and some proper scaling. <laughs> My Crunchyroll story is I bought a month of Crunchyroll because uh, we might have talked about it on this show. Somebody had made, you had to have a Crunchyroll account to do this, but you could pick an entire series off Crunchyroll and just... <laughs> Allegedly, I might have done that because it was like some... <laughs> the like last DBZ series I wanted to watch. And I tried to watch the cruncher. I was like, this is a miserable. Oh no. But I was able to do it that way. Allegedly able to do it that way. I don't know what the legalities are. Um, yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's not illegal. They might try to sue you, but it's not illegal. Yeah, I wouldn't have to worry about it because I didn't do it. Allegedly. <laughs> Not well, a I think That's it's why just, I said they might. Yeah, I think it's just cool that we have a new program that lets you watch TV. There's, you know, few and far between now. I mean, there's uh, other programs out there that do this, but it's the it's nice to see a new one. <laughs> so, do you see how much uh, YouTube TV is now? <laughs> I, uh, I don't. What I don't is have on YouTube, YouTube TV, TV anyway? <laughs> I don't. I had this question hit me earlier this week, and I was like, I want to get rid of TV and all that. 
YouTube TV, let's look into that. Maybe that would be a solution for you. Like for the decent package, you know, the equivalent gas, Pedro, just give me a number. Uh, $24.99 a month. Joe, uh, give me a number. Th- uh, 35 80 bucks. Ah, okay. <laughs> uh, I believe there's a word for that, but it's Wednesday, so I no, can't say no, it. Oh, there is. There, there, there is. There's, there's a perfectly <laughs> safe one. It's called cable TV. I mean, you're not. <laughs> yeah. That's still stupidly expensive for a cable TV package. Especially when you factor in you, your edit out on top of that, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's like, well, geez. Hulu lets you do that too, but you can pick and choose uh, what stations you want, which is nice. So we still got a ways to go on that. All right. Um, <laughs> hey, we got to do a little bit of a shameless self promotion. That's right. But we do have some people mm-hmm. we need to think this week, Jill, uh, because uh, yeah. you lot out there make it possible. Patreon.com mm-hmm. forward slash Linux Gamecast. That's how we do everything here. Keep the lights on and all that fun stuff. But, uh, you know, it's Christmas time. And some people are like, hey, man, we're going to help you out a little extra. Oh, well, one of my favorite people in the community, (laughs) Kai Linux, he increased his pledge. Thank you, Kai. We love you. He had had joined us at the at this year's scale uh, at our scale that's house. That's why your favorite. You actually got to meet him. <laughs> yeah. Okay, all right. Yes, cool. I know him. <laughs> <laughs> and also to Vera Tanuda, he increased his pledge. He's been a a strong supporter of LGC for years. The naked truth himself. Yes. <laughs> yes, we love Vera Tanuda. Thank you. <laughs> that is you guys awesome. Are awesome. We do thank you for that. And. Um, yeah, as a patron, not only do you help us do what we do, we can keep them loud, live, independent, free of ads and all that, but we got extra stuff for you, too. We, we try to spice up the deal a little bit. If mm-hmm. you like Cut of Red Jibs, we do the uncut series of this. If you're listening to this show, this show takes about an hour and a half to two hours to do, and that's the live and uncut mm-hmm. version, and we throw that out in a custom RSS feed for patrons uh, and in podcast format, so you can just listen to that. And that's nothing compared to Saturday. If you need four hours of people talking about everything from the latest Mandalorian episode to Linux gaming, yeah, four-hour version of that each and every week. Plus the pre-pre-super shows, which is our production meeting. And uh, if you want to know what's going on behind the scenes and just stuff like that. Uh, Plus access to our Discord where we're at the other six days of the week. Just That's where we talk. That's our equivalent of Slack. If you don't know what Discord is, it's Slack. You don't need to install an application for it. You just go to the web zone. That's what we all do because, yeah, that client, man, still doesn't have spell check, and I don't know how to spell. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Um, that's enough shilling. Let's get into uh, a slice of pie for ah. resources for pie day. And cherry pie. Pedro, you got some Pecan jam. Mm, yes. Uh, so, Noop Loop. If that is uh, their real name, uh, <laughs> has decided to create <laughs> a couple of uh, bits of software, uh, which you can also combine it all into what they call PyJam OS. And what it does is it creates um, a little software uh, mixer for you to use on a Raspberry Pi. In that case, you can see in the picture, he's got one of them big touch screens over the Pi. And the uh, UI uh, screenshot right below it shows some big buttons and some chunky uh, selection boxes so that you can actually use it with your finger. And it does, uh, yeah, it it seems to be uh, doing, it's either unnecessarily complicated pulse audio or a very basic version of Jack. (laughs) Um, oh, so you sweet sober child. There's no music production being done with Pulse Audio. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I'm looking at the screenshots. It's like, that could be Pavu Control, but probably not. Uh, but yeah, it is a very simple way to do it. Uh, the... PyJam GitHub contains the bits of software. So if you already have a Pi running and you just want the software... Just get it, or you can get uh, PyGem OS mm-hmm. with the whole thing, and then just uh, plug your devices in to the Raspberry Pi, and let it uh, help you do any kind of music production, voice recording. It's kind of interesting. Whatever if you're doing some like loops and samples, I mean, the, especially Raspberry Pi Four series, uh, you got you got some horsepower to play with, man. Once there's you know everything's been built for it, and have a touch screen. 
that, that could be yep. handy. I mean, if you're going to make your beep boop, awesome. I hate it when I call it beep boop music, but come on. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, that's there. I, that's something you should definitely look at um, as opposed to trying to set up a like complete DAW setup on quite possibly the most hostile environment known to music production under Linux, but everyone loves to do it. An old laptop. <laughs> <laughs> because 99 out of 100 problems with Linux audio is I'm repurposing this 10-year-old laptop. <laughs> like, I'm not helping you because that's a horrible <laughs> idea. It's the Linux device. It's the device that they don't actually use. So, mm -hmm. oh, we can install Linux on that. <laughs> All right. Uh, so, is, is this acknowledgement in any way? Shape, I think it is. Fashion? It's coming from the Raspberry Pi blog, the official one, <laughs> written by Eben Upton himself. So, yeah, I think it is. A new product from the fine, fine <laughs> carbon based entities at Raspberry Pi, a Pi 4 case fan, to which we'll all say, for what? The Pi 4, that thing. <laughs> practically sucks heat out of the environment not really <laughs> um check it out man uh they're launching this docking filler so man okay uh that's funny uh you, you can't keep stuff in stock um outside of holiday seasons you might be able to get this in nine months um pi 4 cool <laughs> even running it you get a nice little aluminium block how big is the fan uh 40 mil 40 mil fan is it does it come on like a case attachment uh, it comes with the uh, little uh, transparent plastic bracket that clips onto the inside of the official Raspberry Pi 4 case. Okay. And it has the uh, GPIO pins all ready for you to just plug them in. Mm -hmm. And it does a wonderful, wonderful job of... Uh, not only did it, does it significantly improve the temperature of the pie inside the case which uh, they have a graph at the uh, bottom of the article uh, which is uh, the first one is outside and it goes to like 70 and that's where it sort of levels out uh, and then they have another one inside the case which goes up to like 83 and that's where it sort of levels out. And then they put the fan inside, and the uh, the bottom most graphic shows that it barely even clips 67. So that's good. It, it's <laughs> basically uh, the uh, temperature curve is the same as if it was, you know, exposed to the air and just having uh, the air circulate like that. It actually improves on that. That. That's amazing. Wow. For a teeny almost... tiny little fanny and teeny tiny little heat sink. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Moving air, man. That, that's like the brilliant thing about it. And it's like thermodynamics or thing. And But yeah. that's uh, what they're doing is they're pulling air uh, from in between the USB and um, Ethernet ports in the front and then exhausting it out the back where the... Uh, SD card is. You see, it's so you. I wonder if you flip the uh, <laughs> the Raspberry Pi case upside down, does uh -oh. convection help? <laughs> no, Pedro. No, Pedro. You see the U USB three. If you look on the back there, you can see they're blue, right? So oh, uh, that makes it colder. Two blue okay. ones. Yeah, it's chillers, man. It's USB three chillers. So that's yeah. <laughs> that, that, that's okay. How it works, yeah. Kids. Right. Yeah. All right. <laughs> <laughs> hey, and it's Except only blue $5. blue light is actually warmer than <laughs> red light, but let's not get into that. That's right. <laughs> yeah, so it's only $5 for this this little fan. Of, of course, it okay, should be Okay, $5 for a 40 mil fix. fan is, um, yeah. <laughs> what's the expression around here? Taking the piss? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but it's an official fan. Yeah. <laughs> it's Even the then, official fan. Then, Five dollars for forty mil fans. I'm trying to grab some forty mil fans that I have around here. Oh yeah, I've got, <laughs> I've, I've bought some. I think for like twenty cents before. <laughs> yeah, they were like mm -hmm. a pound each. <laughs> I, I am more than content to just wait. Maybe, maybe we'll edit this for time in the podcast. But <laughs> well, I found a sixty mil. We're getting uh, there. We've made. Oh, uh, there we go. <laughs> Where the heck are they? I don't know. Maybe, <laughs> maybe they've ran away from you. But since. You <laughs> Wouldn't put it past them. Okay. <laughs> Ladies yes, and my... gentlemen, if you want to write us about your 40 millimeter fan collection and your superior organizational skills compared to one Pedro Mateus, <laughs> you can head over to linuxgamecast.com forward slash contact. Smash that button if you're a game developer for our Saturday show. 
check us out on our curator page, or you can send direct. Uh, just make sure you have a working Linux build. I got a thing for audio equipment. If you have some old stuff in your rack, I'd love to take a look at it, put it on my list and let people know that they can make music in Linux. But for this show, just uh, select Linux weekly, daily Wednesdays. Give us a name, give us an email, maybe a subject. Hey, possibly a message. And you know what? We'll get it. Um, it might do something with it, man. We'd love to know what you're up to. Or maybe you just yeah. have a question. Pedro, please <laughs> tell me I bought you enough time to get a fan. Uh, again, <laughs> I think I moved those fans to and on that the bomb show, cover below the TV. I know. Roll the <laughs> I know exactly where mine are, and they are out of reach. <laughs> so. Yeah, mine are out of reach now because I remember because I couldn't close one of the drawers on this um, IKEA thing, and I was like, "What? <laughs> What's behind the drawer that doesn't let me close it properly? So I yanked on it, and it was one of the 40 mil fans. Mm. <laughs> so then I just grabbed them all and uh, put there. some um, elastic bands around them and tossed them in with the other big 120s and 140 mil fans that I have. And they're Aww. below the TV now. <laughs> Well, I, I actually do have some in hand's reach, but I can't open up the case. It's on there in. I have tons of them in my little blade server right here. <laughs> my HP ProLiant. Oh, the levitation <laughs> pens. Yes. Yes. <laughs> See you next week, these people. Love you all. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> oh, poor Pedro. You were so close. I could go get them now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Pedro! <laughs> hey, Adam. <laughs> oh, yeah. Four of them. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> there Four the 40 mil fans. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. Sippy cup. Unicorn. I don't have any fans that small, man. I bought these oh, for yeah. the original iteration of the uh, Steam box until I realized, wait a second, this isn't doing anything. It's not mm -hmm. getting warm enough to justify having these. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> and now I actually need bigger fans to get rid of the uh, teeny tiny fans on the GPU because uh -huh. they are screechy. <laughs> Screechy little fans. <laughs> They're shouty, Pedro. Thank you, Computer Kid. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Yay, Computer Kid. But yeah, <laughs> I found um, there's uh, I can get two 70 mil fans uh, across the uh, the heatsink. Mm -hmm. I just need to find a bracket that will hold the two fans after I've epoxied them together. <laughs> Why don't you just build a normal case? Because that's the whole point. <laughs> Do you take people over to your house and go, look, look what I've done. I mean, not, you know, current pandemic argument, but. Uh... <laughs> oh, I see it, Adamax. Cool. <laughs> I love them too, FX boy. I do. Uh, actually, seriously, that uh, 1650 for the amount of power it draws, that is a magnificent mm -hmm. GPU. If you have an old PC that what you need for it to become a reasonable gaming machine, 1650. <laughs> nah. Don't get the super. You need uh, a six pin uh, extra PCIe power connector for the uh, 1650 super, mm -hmm. which uh, basically puts it on par with the 950. It's the Y. Why would you do that? <laughs> Why exactly. would you get that card when you could mm. get the 75 watt one? <laughs> so it's like a PS5 with a bunch of extra steps. <laughs> it's a PS5 that runs, you know, all the Linux games, a bunch of the Proton games. Yeah. <laughs> it has infinitely more mm. games than the PS5 has right now. That's because the only high-profile game out for the PS5 right now is Demon Souls. You know, the one that came out in 2009. Cyberpunk shipped yesterday. <laughs> <everyone>. <laughs> yeah. 
it will be eventually released. But yeah, no, the, no, <laughs> no. It, uh, Jim Patriot, Sterling. You misunderstood me. It ship people have it today. Oh, already have it. Okay. Yeah, it they they kind of Best Buy went oopsie doodle. <laughs> Ah, <laughs> there we go. <laughs> so there's this streaming embargo on it for all the streamers that have signed mm-hmm. the contracts and deals to market it. And everyone else is like, man, I'm just going to stream it. Deal everyone one. who just, yeah. oops. <laughs> all the That's review embargoes perfect. and everything. I'm like, whatever, I'm just going to stream it. What are you going to do? <laughs> You're going to tell us not to stream right. what, what everyone else is doing? <laughs> Oh, God. <laughs> you could uh, probably play um, <laughs> Cyberpunk on the 1650. Playing it on Linux might be a bit of a challenge mm-hmm. <laughs> on accounts of it's out. <laughs> uh, or it's not out. <laughs> yeah, so true, FX boy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Linux has more games than one Mac. Yep. <laughs> oh yes, that's a given. Uh, who who wants to develop in metal? <laughs> no, someone God. said that they were uh, porting the game. It wasn't Fortnite. It was some someone else. Wow, that that narrows it down to like. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. Uh, game announced port to M1 Mac. Fortnite. <laughs> you know what i wow. retract that i retract that the m1 the m1 world of warcraft thank you mr right yeah <laughs> yeah but it's coming near I've, I've heard them talking about the, it um, m1 has more games than any console or pc that's probably because i just realized that no you can play everything from the um App Store. From the Apple Store. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Poorly, because touchscreen emulation, but... <laughs> but, yeah, the World of Warcraft, uh, Blizzard, uh, or Activision, were like, yeah, we're totally releasing, um, <laughs> totally porting World of Warcraft to the M1 Mac. I... <sighs> People in Discord had very good takes on the whole thing. That that was very good. <laughs> so, if metal doesn't exist, what are they using? GLES? Like everyone else? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Yeah, Steve Jobs was, uh, yeah, GLS. Uh, Steve Jobs was very much against games, but even Steve Jobs himself had John Carmack, uh, on stage to present Doom 3, uh, for the, uh, I can't remember which of the G version Max it was uh, when, uh, Doom 3 came out, to show, it's like, look at what it can do, it can play Doom 3! It's like, oh, that must have killed you a little bit on the inside. <laughs> he was all about uh, making money. And he did. <laughs> yes. <laughs> he, uh, once he took the reins of Apple, uh, when he came back to Apple. Yeah. <laughs> that and Microsoft's money kind of pulled <laughs> Apple out from the brink of uh, non-existence. Mm-hmm. <laughs> There's a really good talk, um, entertaining, I would say. Um, I think it was at Berkeley. And Steve Jobs. It was about probably about an hour, hour and a half, and. He was uh, talking about, you know, just to the students, um, his strategy with Apple against Sun Microsystems. Mm-hmm. How he was going to take Sun down. Yeah, I remember, you know, hearing him talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> that was a thing. <laughs> and then Oracle bought Sun, and they're effectively... Uh... <laughs> Sun's gone. It's, it's a fate worse than death. <laughs> yeah. Uh, 
<laughs> All right, let me see. Yeah, you could make the argument that Atari was against fun too. After all, they did kill the video games industry in 1983. <laughs> Atari didn't kill it. It wasn't Atari, it was all the uh, shovelware that was coming out for that particular platform. And the other ones, Aww. to be fair. <laughs> Nintendo had to fight hard just to get a couple of stores um, when they were doing test marketing for the NES to get them to carry it. It's an entertainment system. It's not a game game console. It's an entertainment system. It comes with a robot buddy. <laughs> it is a very simplified computer. And no one put two and two together. <laughs> Yeah, the, the micro scene here uh, in the UK is still very much alive and well. Yeah. <laughs> After all, the Raspberry Pi 400 was just released. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, form factor wise, that's probably the single most powerful computer in that particular form factor. <laughs> Yeah, actually. Just because you couldn't f uh, you couldn't fit a latte panda in one of them without it, you know, cooking itself to death. <laughs> What's amazing is how I thought it would be a little thicker than, you know, the I've Custom seen so PCB. many reviews of it. But it's very thin. Yeah, that uh, <laughs> that l lower bit, uh, it's a custom PCB. It's like a stretched out version of the uh, Raspberry Pi 4 PCB. Yeah. Yeah. And it's got the heat sink. Well, we talked about it. Yep. Yeah, it's got the heat sink. <laughs> the special heat sink. My favorite thing about the holidays, when I think about it, is um, all the sites that you've inadvertently or just had to create an account for throughout the year that you've forgotten about. They get really outreachy, and you get to go to unsubscribe. <laughs> all the, like, Newegg, I'm sorry, Newegg, I unsubscribe from you. You wouldn't. Uh, yeah, I got so many emails from Newegg, like oh. for like um, you know the Black Friday and Cyber Monday. Like there was one day I had like I think six from Newegg, <laughs> and it, it was not like a hung up system. It was like oh these new deals, come on buy something. I get it, but no. Nah. Yeah, truth Amazon be told, I didn't send me a single yeah. email about the Black Friday deals. <laughs> I got a oh, bunch I of emails tons. from uh, I got yeah. a bunch of emails from other companies, but not but from not Amazon. Amazon. No, I did both. <laughs> well, of course, on the phone, I got all the no notifications as well. But I got some emails from them too. Um, but Newegg, I have never signed up to for that reason. I knew they they spammed heavy. So I just when I buy stuff from them, I usually just buy as a guest or I buy from their eBay account <laughs> just so I don't have to deal with yeah. with setting up a membership. <laughs> oh, GOG did burn me a few years back with the emails. There was a week that I counted them. It was over 25 emails from Gog. It's like, oh, no. I believe that. Yeah. We're done. <laughs> Were you satisfied with the support you received from Humble? No, I wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> Have you fixed the zips or the rars disguised as zips? <laughs> I didn't get support. I got like the boilerplate of like a. Uh, I didn't get support. I got the bot. Mm -hmm. <laughs> staples. I don't have a staples account. I had to uh, invoke GDPR to uh, nuke all of the accounts that I'd created for stores in Portugal mm. a while back because it's like, look, <laughs> do you want me to call GDPR or are you just going to shut down my account? We'll shut it down. <laughs> okay. <laughs> hey, um, there's a little pro tip for you, man. If, uh, sites are going to be collecting any type of data when, once you see that gdpr little pop-up and you'll see it you know even if you visit from outside of the eu like hey we use cookies 
That means it might not be easy to get to it, but somewhere on that site, there's a setting to tell them to go F off with their data collection on you. Mm hmm. And if they are found to not be abiding by it, well, Google just learned how the fees are for that. <laughs> and Apple. <laughs> Same. Yeah, Microsoft w was also um, went into court for something, but I don't remember what. <laughs> <laughs> it's Microsoft, man, come on. And there was talk of a class action lawsuit against Amazon after um, the AWS outage last week. <laughs> really? Oh. I don't know if it's going forward or not, but I saw some news articles. <laughs> I got some notification that it is one of the Amazon um, services that they refine billing down to milliseconds. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and it was down for several hours. <laughs> well, you get what you pay for. <laughs> That's like one of those things, though, man, between Amazon and Google, like, once that's down, if somebody's like, your thing's down, I'm like, yeah, but so is half the internet. Yeah. <laughs> <I mean. laughs> oh, Google went down. Well, there goes about 25% of the websites. Okay. <laughs> I looked at Horizon Zero Dawn, but that thing had a poo rating on uh, ProtonDB. Yeah, I've noticed that too. I, I think the latest version, I think it was Proton GE. It works. I don't know if it works very well, but it works. <laughs> uh, horizon. No, the other Horizon. <laughs> Silver. <Silver's Play> yeah. Optimize. <laughs> Let's see. Um, oh, um, Suboptimal FPS is with a 2080 Ti. Um, yeah. Uh, well, yeah 219, 1440, uh, all maxed out. Yeah, you can probably tone that down. <laughs> with a 2080 <laughs> Ti. Uh, you mean a 3070? Yeah. <laughs> In some situations. <laughs> Basically, anything that doesn't need more than uh, 8 gigabytes of VRAM, yeah. <laughs> uh. Yeah, this is just too many. That... <laughs> it's silver. It's still silver. <laughs> silver don't mean what it used to. No, no, it no. does. Uh, you saw silver on the app DB uh, for wine, and you'd go, eh, maybe. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you see silver on uh, Proton DB, it's like, yeah, no. <laughs> Assassin's Creed Odyssey. <laughs> if you want to play that, um, you got to run the latest. Um, Proton GE to get rid of the uh, BS letterboxing throughout the entire game. Oh, are they using uh, Windows Media for the UI? <laughs> no, it's it does um, has issues detecting your screen resolution. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so there's like all these other like weird moon hacks out in the weeds, and like let's just use the latest version of Proton um, GE. Or whatever it is, and it just works out of the box. You're done with it. Nice. <laughs> and you know, if you can run one Assassin's Creed game, it's the same game, so <laughs> same performance as you should expect. With um, you can go back Origins. three or yeah. four years and play all of the Assassin's Creeds. <laughs> the uh, you on the twenty sixty at ten eighty p on high eh, sixty seventy playable. Uh, the one thing that I saw with um, when Valve released Proton 5.13 was games that make use of um, 
WMVs and uh, WMA audio. Mm -hmm. Some of them started working, but <laughs> Dark Souls 2, instead of playing the intro cutscene, <laughs> I get the color bars of like the test screen and the staticky on one corner is like, Ooh. What, 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 what? <laughs> I remember when they first updated that several months back to make a lot of that stuff work. There was one game I was that was like my game that I was playing through. It enabled all the uh, crap, the unskippable BS at the beginning of the game. I'm like, no, I'm not using that. So I made sure that. <laughs> I hate that game developers. I get it. Publishing studios. I get it. On the first time you launch it, you're like, oh, okay. Mm -hmm. On the first time, sure. I will sit and watch all the cutscenes until you show me the Cut. press any key. Yeah, press the key to continue, right? It's like, let's yeah. start. NVIDIA, AMD, blah, blah, blah. Don't have a seizure, bro. Um, that, okay, I get it. These, yeah, exactly. these are our rights. <laughs> the first time. That immediately is unwatchable and old on the second time you start the okay. game. I don't need to see that again. Which oh, is why gosh, a lot poor. of people, if you go to the... Um, the Steam forums. Oh yeah, just move all of the big files uh, out of the folder and create empty text files and rename them to the same thing, .bic. It'll just skip them. <laughs> There's a bunch of games for the, where that actually works. <laughs> yeah, FX Boy, I've uh, played with the, the Uplay app. Yeah, it's not fun. <laughs> Yeah, I, I have had two games similar. on you play. Yeah. <laughs> One was uh, South Park: The Stick of Truth yeah. because oh, yeah, that's right. they were giving yeah. a key away for a while, <laughs> and the other one was uh, came with the 970, uh, the Crew, okay. <laughs> which I I did a stream on. <laughs> yeah, I I had uh, Assassin's Creed. They gave it to us for um, back in 2018 when we were testing um, Stadia. And so they just gave us a free copy in our Uplay accounts. And mm -hmm. I was like, oh, that, that, that's neat. And I tried a couple of things to get up. I even, just out of morbid curiosity, I had some free time. Like, Let's see if I can get this working correctly with Lutris and played around with it. And it's like, yeah. And um, nothing against Lutris on that. It was just, it, I couldn't get it. I just got the Steam version, which uses Uplay, but it also has the advantage of, um, big advantage for me, at least, was to do the shader pre-caching. Ah. Uh. So it went from tinker, 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 no, 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 play. <laughs> <laughs> Done. <laughs> oh, is the Beth yeah. Bethesda Lodger still poop? I was considering um, maybe getting Fallout 76 if it went on stupid sale at some point. Mm. <laughs> In that case, I guess I won't. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have anything on, I was going to say Bethesda. I was like, nope. Uh, the only Bethesda games I have are uh, Quake 2 and um, Skyrim. Because they've managed to fix some of the bugs. <laughs> and it, it is a Bethesda game, so I always expect bugs. And it, thus far, it's the only Fallout game that I haven't played. Yes, I played uh, Tactics and Brotherhood of Steel on the PS2. I don't talk about those because, as far as I'm concerned, they don't exist. But <laughs> I want to try 76. <laughs> It, it just, uh, I mean, I understand it's all directly from the same company and all that, but even watching your Fallout forms, like, it's just, it, it just looks like a bad Skyrim mod. <laughs> it was pre Skyrim. <laughs> Doesn't change the fact that it looks like a bad Skyrim mod. Pre Skyrim. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I was trying to remember what game I last bought from you played. It was the Anno 1800. <laughs> so I wanted to play with that. Hmm. Wasn't that one of the games that had a really stupid activation-based DLC that tied itself to the hardware? Oh, yes. Yeah, that was an issue. I remember uh, <laughs> it was one of the Anno games, and, like, um, hardware reviewers 
they mm-hmm. swapped a bunch of video cards on the same uh, install of Anno. And after like the fifth, no, you gotta buy a new license if you want to keep playing because you changed your hardware too much. Mm. <laughs> Doesn't Windows Annoying. have something built like that if you swap out hardware too many you times, you gotta out, reactivate um, it? I think if you do a complete system swap, if you just take the SSD to another, it goes, no, uh, it's no longer activated. You need to call Microsoft for them to re-enable it. Uh, or if you change enough of your system, uh, you can replace like motherboard, CPU, and RAM in one go, and it'll remain activated. Nori still is. It's actually using the key from one of the mm. laptops. I just pulled the key from the BIOS and typed it in. Oh, hey, it works. There you go. <laughs> I have two Windows 7 keys on the top of these Dells, but I don't... They're there. Yeah, I use the, um, the Windows 8 key for the cheapo Lenovo laptop. Uh, to activate uh, the install of Windows in Nori's PC, and it went like, oh, this is a key for Windows 8. Congratulations, Windows 10 is active. Okay. <laughs> I assume I have a Windows 8 key for that tablet. <laughs> Probably, yeah. Probably. <laughs> There's a uh, command script uh, that you can run. It'll just pull the key out. <laughs> On the tablet. Yeah. All right. I, You'll have to no. type it in to come out no, 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 no. on you, the you, tablet. You were like, mm, I would have to cut it on. <laughs> I have access. You'll have to charge it a little bit first, too. Uh, yeah, yeah. I have access to the iTunes account now from Linux. I don't, that thing, no. <laughs> yeah, it took a while for Apple to actually enable people to log in from the web browser. <laughs> Oh, Chief, I have Uno on <laughs> Uplay. I, I haven't logged into my Uplay account forever. <laughs> G Music, bro. oh man, like local <laughs> music collections. That used to, I used to have. I guess I still do. It's just not powered up, man. Like, mm. <laughs> yeah, my music collection has now moved to the NAS, uh, all thirty something gigs of it. Um, mm. It's not very big. <laughs> Just because I'm very picky with my music. Uh, of, like, an entire band's uh, discography, maybe I'll like two, three songs. That's it. <laughs> I listen to YouTube music these days. That's, pretty much it. <laughs> That's very convenient. Yeah, the, YouTube has, <laughs> has figured me out, so it's like, oh, you, my mix. Click on that. There we go. <laughs> Yeah, I was really happy when they added that. Oh, nice! Now it plays everything that I favorited, you know, in in a playlist. That's Make nice. suggestions similar to those. It, the algorithm's yeah. not very good. Uh, when it goes through uh, the ones that I actually like and it starts suggesting new ones, it's like, no, 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 no. Yeah, that one can stay. Mm. No, 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 no. <laughs> then I have to wait for the current song to finish for it to load more. It's like, okay, no, 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 mm. no. <laughs> Well, to that point, I don't know what do you call it now. Do I have? I had Google Music, YouTube. Is it you? I guess this is YouTube Music now. They keep changing it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, play music is that so it's just YouTube Music. Yeah. All I know, I can still say, okay, Google, play typo negative, and it brings up my typo negative channel, which isn't isn't just typo negative, but it's that genre mm. of happy fun K-pop. Ah, yes. <laughs> I love K-pop. Without the absolutely toxic Western fan, fan base. Mm. Aww. <laughs> I'm not entirely sure that they're aware. <laughs> I mean, they probably are, but they're probably not aware of just how bad their fan base is on this side of the world. <laughs> Every fan base has that side, man. <laughs> <laughs> All right, everyone, it is 4.34, mm-hmm. so that means I yeah. need to get to work. And... So I hope everybody has a fantastic rest of your week. Jordan will be back tomorrow with something. Yes. 
<laughs> Jill is a very antithesis of toxicity. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Pedro. <laughs> he said that good as well. <laughs> I have to um, pronounce the word antithesis very uh, yeah. deliberately. Otherwise, it's just antithesis. <laughs> well, at least you didn't say antithecarian. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> Arthur! Is that you. A, the hybrid between um, <laughs> uh, Fothicarian and um, Antithesis? <laughs> I, hmm. I love you too, Adam. <laughs> oh, yes, he is, Adam. Pedro is intoxicating. No. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in the process of intoxicating myself, but that's where it oh. stops. <laughs> <laughs> but you were last uh, last Saturday. <laughs> I was, yes. Again, I, I started drinking early that night, and I finished a bottle of whiskey, and then it was just beer for the rest of the night. That's, <laughs> that's how you do it. Tox. <laughs> Jordan. <laughs> Good times. And uh, Friday, I'll be back with... Uh, Problem. I'm, I might be playing a Nintendo game, a NES game. Oh, nice. <laughs> that has been modded. Ooh. Cool. Uh, does it remove uh, <laughs> the copyright uh, claim from uh, Uncle Nintendo? <laughs> I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a rebel, Pedro. <laughs> <laughs> well, we did throw chairs at uh, ASMR too, so. <laughs> right. Okay, beautiful people. Everybody have fun. We'll see you later. We're out. <laughs> Bye. Bye, everyone. Love you. Do, 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 do.